Let's just say that if you have problems with a movie portraying God as a black woman, then you should probably also have problems with Jesus being portrayed as a blue-eyed white male as well, right? Hey guys, my name is Justin, and I want to welcome you to That Christian Vlogger, a place where you get to join me and experience faith in the first person. On this channel, I tackle relevant and somewhat controversial subjects like this one every single Monday and Thursday, so definitely consider subscribing. Also, if you'd like to know when new videos come out, don't forget to hit that bell icon below. Over the last couple of weeks, I've been asked multiple times for my opinions on The Shack. No, not that one. That one. Should Christians watch or read The Shack, or is The Shack heresy? Now, I haven't actually ever read the book, and before last week, I didn't even know what the storyline was. I've heard of multiple people saying that the book was absolutely mind-blowing, and that it really helped them grow closer to God. And then on the other hand, I've had some people telling me the book was heretical, and dangerous, and even blasphemous. And to kind of make it all a little bit more tricky, I have both real-life friends and internet friends whose opinion that I respect on both sides of the equation. So last week, I called up my pastor and asked if he'd be willing to go check out the movie with me. Now, funnily enough, when we got to the theater, the computer system was down and the manager couldn't charge us, so she ended up letting us go in for free, so that was pretty cool. So in this video, I want to speak more at length towards one of the common objections that I've heard with the movie, namely that God the Father is played by a black woman in just a second. So before I do so, I wanted to say this. Usually, I really hate Christian movies. I find that most of the time they have terrible acting, they're entirely predictable endings, and they're so unrealistic in their storylines. I really dislike how neat and clean many Christian movies portray life because let's just face it, life just isn't isn't that simple most of the time. And that's what was so pleasantly surprising about The Shack. To be honest, the movie was really, really good. I felt like they did an exceptional job at wrestling through the very real and ugly parts of life. So many of us have been faced with a tragedy and loss and wrestled with the question of where was God in all of this? And if you're someone like this, then I think that you can really benefit from checking the movie out. The story basically talks about one man who hated God and his journey towards eventually learning how to trust and ultimately love God. The movie starts off with the main character taking his three children on a camping trip and then his youngest daughter was abducted and eventually murdered. Naturally, his heart is broken and he's depressed and he's angry at life and frustrated and angry at God. I won't say more about the storyline because I don't want to spoil it for you and honestly I just I thought that the rest of the movie was amazing and I'd highly recommend that you check it out. Obviously with the controversy over the book slash movie I wouldn't go into it just ready to accept every single little thing in the movie but just go into it with a filter and I think that you'll be really blessed. A friend of mine on social media described watching the movie like eating a watermelon. A lot of really great stuff, good stuff, but you just have to be able to spit out the seeds. And so that brings me to the main point of this video. One of the biggest concerns that people have with the movie is how God the Father is portrayed by a black woman. I know of several people who have had issues with this, so this response, this video isn't directed towards any of you guys specifically, but just they're just my thoughts on the general concept of this whole thing. Is it wrong to portray God as a black woman? Short answer, I don't think so. Here's why. The Bible actually mentions multiple times where God the Father identifies as either a male or a female metaphorically. The point isn't that God is actually male or female, but rather, I believe God is highlighting character traits he possesses that are commonly and nearly universally known as male or feminine. So here are just five examples of the Bible referring to God as a female. In Hosea 13, 8, God refers to himself as a mother bear robbed of her cubs, highlighting the loving and protective nature that God has towards us. Isaiah 66, 13 talks about God as a loving and caring mother who comforts her children. Isaiah 49, verse 15 compares God's everlasting faithfulness with the wicked and evil nursing mother who forgets her children. Luke 15, 8 through 10 has God symbolized by a woman who has 10 coins and then loses one, rejoicing when she finds it again. And last for this list, Matthew 23, verse 27 talks about God being like a protective mother hen gathering her chickens under her wings. I will include a slightly longer list of texts in the description below as the Bible does mention God as a female at least a couple more times that I'm aware of. Now, some of you guys might say, but Justin, all of these verses are just metaphors. 
Really? What did you think the shack was, if not a metaphor? As a friend of mine put it, ironically, it's okay for us to portray God the Father as a female chicken, but not a female human. Now again, the point isn't that God is actually a male or a female. I don't think that God actually conforms to the binary male slash female paradigm. To put it bluntly and crudely, I don't think God the Father actually has a penis. Sorry if that's an offensive way to say it, but I believe I'm right on this and I think that Jesus would agree. As Jesus said in John 4, 34, God is a spirit and a spirit does not have flesh and bones. When God refers to himself, I believe he does so in a way that he, we can best relate to and understand. So at times when God is speaking to a patriarchal society that feels that only men could ever have power, authority, and respect, then it serves his purpose to refer to himself in the masculine form. But then at other times when he wants to highlight other attributes, God's apparently not afraid to be referred to in the feminine form either. Focusing so narrowly on whether God is male or female then just misses the point because the point isn't the gender of God, but his character. And this is why I thought that the movie was absolutely genius with its portrayal of God as a woman. Because in the story for a man who's lost his youngest daughter and was struggling to trust God, God reveals him or herself as a woman, someone who is kind and tender-hearted, someone whose heart also broke over the tragedy instead of an aloof and apathetic dictator on a throne way off in the distance. In short, let's just say that if you have problems with a movie portraying God as a black woman, then you probably should also have problems with Jesus being portrayed as a blue-eyed white man too, right? And the reason I say this is because technically speaking, neither are true. God technically is not a black woman and Jesus wasn't white, nor did he have a British accent, blonde hair, or blue eyes, as many of the books and movies produced out here in the West would try to lead you to think. One of the most beautiful truths of the Bible is that you and I were created in the very image of God. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them both male and female. Get that. There is something about the nature of man that reflects God's character or image. Not man as in maleness, but man as in humanity, both male and female. Both sexes highlight different attributes of an amazingly beautiful and incredibly complex God. Now, admittingly, this was only one of many objections I've heard regarding the movie and I've talked long enough, so here's where I'm gonna turn the video over to you guys. If you've seen the movie, I'm interested in knowing what were your thoughts, what did you find of value, and then where were your issues of concern? Or on the other hand, if you're not planning on watching the movie and you have other reservations that you would like to highlight in the conversation, then let us know in the comments below. As always, these videos are just my thoughts on the subject and I encourage you to study and pray your way to your own conclusion. I do note that the video today was a little longer than normal, but if you made it this far, thanks so much for watching. And if you've been enjoying our weekly videos and you would like to financially support this ongoing discussion, you can do so at patreon.com slash thatchristianvlogger. But until next time, I'm That Christian Vlogger and I wanna encourage you to experience faith in the first person. God bless.